Hi, my name is Leah Campbell Badacher, and this is my painting entitled You Are Not Alone. Um, the sensational Susan Hyatt has purchased this piece, and I couldn't be happier that it's going to such a wonderful and beautiful person. And since I can't be there when she opens it, um, I wanted to give her a little bit of a video tour and, and guide her through some of the images and the symbols um, and the meaning that I think this painting has, which is not to say that there's not meaning that you, the viewer, and Susan and her family can't take from it as well. Um, so to begin with, I told Susan a little bit of the backstory of the genesis of this painting, and um, it was at a time when I was having kind of a hard time, and I said a prayer, just said, God, just let me know I'm not alone, because things don't seem to be working out, and I'm giving it my all. Um, and I was really, yeah, I was really burnt out, and I was really stressed, and I was really pregnant um, with my third baby, and the answer I got was, just go paint. So I did, and put in my headphones, and kind of got lost in it, and I never paint with like an, an end result in mind. I just go intuitively and follow the process and follow the painting and see what comes up. And so at the end of 90 minutes, my playlist was up and I stood back and I took a look and there were ve nine very distinct um, figures, heads and presences in the painting. And I was filled with this overwhelming sense of I am not alone, and it seemed like a direct answer to my prayer, and it was a very good energy and benevolent, loving, and felt very strong, like a guardian type energy. And at the same time, my mind was freaking out a little bit, <laughs> so every hair on my body was standing on end, and it was probably like one in the morning, I ran up the stairs and pulled the covers over my head, and I didn't touch the painting for probably a year and a half. Um, partly because I was intimidated by the way it started. I didn't know what I could do to finish it that would match um, that very inspired and um, beyond me beginning. Um, and I, I also thought, well, maybe that's just all it's meant to be. But about six months ago, something told me to pick it up again, and I did. And then again, six weeks ago, I came back to it, and... Um, really work to finish it and so here she is and as you can see you can't see most of those original nine figures I just followed my heart and my heart said you know they're still there but they have transformed into other things and you can still see some um, vestiges of their presence still but the central figure is this woman and you know you can take her to be what you think she is. I think the gesture of her head is a very Madonna-like gesture, a Madonna and child, very motherly. Um, and this to me really seems like a childlike figure, or somebody that's being watched over, not necessarily a child, but just anyone that's being watched over. And it to me also is very symbolic of the earth with those colors and the changing seasons that go across it. And there's something else cool about this point that, about this part that um, I'll tell you a little bit later. So, you know, maybe it's the Madonna child. Maybe it's mothers in general. Maybe it's women in general. Um, it's probably has a lot to do with the divine feminine in general because that really inspires a lot of my art and a lot of my creativity is the divine feminine, which is why then down over here, sometimes I often work in like a motif of churches into my painting, which is not to say the church quote-unquote but it's this um, rising divine feminine energy that I feel is changing spirituality and um, women are coming more into their own as spiritual authorities and as a as a move as a movement and as a presence for peace and change and throughout the painting there are symbols of the divine feminine um, but clearly she's the central image and to me, she seems very divine, and then also it seems very juxtaposed, this very earthly energy, moon, star, very celestial. And then here, too, another sign I have begun working 
um, little hidden symbols of Isis, again, the divine feminine, a goddess in the left hand. And so up here, you can see the symbol for Isis and the belt of Isis kind of hidden in plain sight. Some of these disks, I, to me, are representative of the moon, La Luna, again, very feminine energy. And then down here, I mean, this area for a while kind of perplexed me, and this, these flowers, these lilies weren't here, and I let it be for a while and meditated on what it was meant to be, and I had just a strong sense, this has happened before, that there was supposed to be a white flower here, and I looked I just happened to go through my sketchbook and a postcard fell out of a, a Georgia O'Keeffe lily, white lily that this is very reminiscent of. So, and this is a nod towards her, a very influential figure um, for women artists, but also art in general. And, and as it turns out, I looked up the name of this flower later and it's an angel's trumpet. So I thought that was very appropriate because again, I think this is, could very well be um, guardian angels and they're guardian and angelic presences. And this painted a whole host of them. And then I decided to um, weave in some trailing angel trumpets here as well, some more lilies, very feminine to me again. Um, the tree of life. Is a motif I work into a lot of my art. It tends to appear organically. And here is an important image and metaphor for this painting. So you can see that here are a couple poppies and then a stem that trails along her neck and kind of follows the curve of her neck and becomes her shoulder, then transforms into a road. And so to me, it's very symbolic of the road that we're all traveling. And above that road, in sort of this landscape area back here, it's probably hard to see on the camera, but there is the suggestion of landscape here, of countryside, hillside, and then rising into the skyscape um, are etched the words, you are not alone. And those words appear throughout this painting. Most times they've been covered up, but you can still very distinctly see them here. And the next place you can see them the most still that remains is, is up here. You are not alone. Other words that are in this painting that I don't think you can probably see anymore are miracles. Because to me, this is a painting that is so much about the, the everyday gifts that are miracles in our life, nature, and just the vibrancy of life and color and beauty. And so another theme for me is meditating on um, everyday miracles and how they abound in our life. And so to inspire myself and keep myself focused, I often write in, and I did in this painting as well, um, miracles and everyday miracles. And another image in this painting, so beneath this road that we're all traveling, that we are not alone on, um, hangs this image right here, which was one of the original nine. Um, and then to me, it started to look more like a chrysalis. It had that shape of a butterfly chrysalis. And then I noticed I've already had this butterfly up here, so it seemed a natural connection to me. That this chrysalis was the origin of that butterfly, and I um, painted a tear in that. So that, again, symbolizes you know, the journey that we all have, this metamorphosis, and how we're supported in it, and we're not alone. Um, other imagery, birds and flight and everything they evoke, um, is something that I use a lot in my work. And here you have a central image, very kind of dove-like to me, because I think this is this is a very strong painting, and I think her presence is very strong. And again, it seems like it's a quiet power and it's a guardian-like energy, like, um, but it comes from a very peaceful place. And I think. This, to me, is the energy of the Divine Feminine. It is a badass energy, but it's in a, in a divinely feminine way. It comes from this, this quiet power, um, and it doesn't have to be quiet, because clearly the colors I use are not quiet. But there are these things that are seemingly contradictions, but I think the painting brings them all together. Um, so again, you have the dove image, but I still also like to use some kind of hot, fiery colors here. 
and then also cool them with earth colors, these greens and blues. So a lot of images of shoots rising up, things growing, um, wings are coming on teeth in my paintings. I love to um, paint into the physical things that I feel surround us um, in the non-physical and in the invisible. So taking that invisible support and that invisible reality and making it physical is something I love to do. That's like the alchemy of painting, I think, and that's such a, an amazing uh, potential for it and the magic of it. So there are some wings. And let's see. Um, I, there's so many things. I know I'm forgetting some. I also like to juxtaposition night skies with day skies and light. So again, to encompass the whole, because throughout all of our lives, there are times that are dark, but I still punctuate it with stars and light. Um, and yeah, so I, um, I think I'm hitting on all the major ones. And again, this is not to say this is an exhaustive tour and that there aren't things that if they occur to you are equally as valid. Um, and I would love to hear if anyone sees this, if they see other things that I haven't described, I, I would love to hear from you um, what you see in this painting and, and what it evokes for you. Um, because then in general, this my, my general sense of having her in my home is that it is a very beautiful and quiet, powerful presence, but, a, but definitely a guardian presence. And so, Susan, I hope for you and your family that she is this warm and guardian-like companion for your home and brings you much beauty and inspiration. So thank you so much for supporting my art. I am delighted that she's going to your home. Um, this means the world to me. So thank you and have a great day. Okay, a PS. I forgot a couple of things, a couple of really cool things. So um, quickly, I said I'd come back to this figure. So I painted this in, this was here for a while. Initially it had a very mandala-like decor around it, um, which then became what it is now. But the color scheme has always been like this. And then one day I was, you know, kind of doing some research on um, symbols and mythology and and kind of following up on some intuitive hits I had, and I came across on Pinterest, I love Pinterest, um, a symbol that was, it looks very much like this without the tree and without the stars, but the colors were shaped this way, and it was, it's called an evil eye. And the story of the evil eye was that um, oftentimes medicine women, witches, but the wise women in cultures, the people that took birth babies and make people beautiful and um, just did all sorts of everyday magic. They used the evil eye to ward off evil spirits and obviously there was a time in our history then when these women were persecuted um, and their wisdom had to go underground but it persisted because a lot of times these evil eyes then sort of morphed into or, or um, covertly made their way into as decorative objects, like like benign, innocuous, who knows what they are, decorative obje objects, including um, Christmas ornaments. So I saw a lot of pictures of Christmas ornaments that were you know, kind of round like this, or a little bit geometric, multifaceted shape, but with this color scheme, and again, it's called an evil eye, meant to ward off evil spirits. So, um, I thought that was hugely appropriate and way cool that I did not know that in, in advance, especially given the general energy of this painting is such, is one of such um, guardian, it's like feminine, strong, guardian, divine feminine energy. Um, so, and, and also roots, including trees and the, the flowers and the plants, roots, and you know, what it, what it has meant over time to be a woman and the, the wisdom that we've had access to and the tradition that we um, have been temporarily disconnected from through you know part of history. But I think that is 
still innately part of our DNA and is rising up in us now. So, evil eye. That was one thing. And then the other thing I was going to note was just like the more of a general thing about my paintings because they, um, you know, they come and they go and there's movement and there's like a sense of incompletion, which for a while, like, was very hard for me um, because I'm a recovering perfectionist and you know, recovering, like in, I went to law school, I, um, and even though all those things never seem to fit, and this does, I still have that angst of trying to tie everything up um, perfectly with the bow. And for me, this journey of becoming a painter has been about just unleashing. And even, you know, even when you paint, it's not very painterly to like paint perfectly and tiny. You know, it's, it's more gestural and it's, it's a visceral energy for me. I know I'm in a good place if I'm in my body and I'm not in my head. And I think when I paint like that, I'm in a good place, this cool thing happens in my paintings. Like you don't know where to start, where to stop, and it's like very fluid, and it, you go into it, and you come back, and your eye keeps moving. Um, and it doesn't have like one meaning you can reduce it to, and it is not tied up with this perfect little bow. You cannot reduce it. And, and I love that. I love that it... Um, can have these many meanings and as many dimensions, even though it's, you know, just two dimensions. So again, I, I hope that this was useful. And again, thank you again so much, Susan. I hope you love your painting.